Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. The drama around Halo Infinite continues and that's what we'll be talking about on today's video. The newest bit of news comes from Unishek who's posted an update about upcoming playlists to Halo Infinite addressing some, I'll say, community feedback. But there's a ton of controversy and I want to try to cover as much as I can on today's video while also giving you guys my personal opinion. Now, if you want much more frequent Halo Infinite content, we put nearly daily videos on my gaming channel X2. We also do live streams and stuff. It's overall a great time. Link to that down in the description. Anyway, Halo Infinite is an amazing game in my opinion. I think the maps are really phenomenal. I think the gameplay is probably the best it's ever been, and that's not an exaggeration. But the community has a few, well, I'll call it pain points. Broadly, I would call these progression, monetization, and content. Let's talk about content first, because it's, of course, the most relevant to Unishek's new tweet. So the good thing is pretty much everyone agrees that Halo Infinite plays very, very well. Not everyone, but I think a lot of people are really a fan of how the game operates. But to be fair, there's not a lot of content there. Halo Infinite launched with five competitive arena maps, that's what you play in ranked, and HCS actually only uses four. That's less than a double-A game like Star Wars Squadrons, but I think the bigger issue that people are focusing on is the way the game has presented playlists. Right now, if you go into Halo Infinite, there are only three options. You can play Big Team Battle, you can play Quick Play, which is sort of an unranked Slayer and Objective game type, or you can play Ranked, which is a ranked Slayer and Objective playlist. This is a fairly stark contrast to Halo multiplayer releases in the past, which usually have far more game modes. For one, usually you do have Objective and Slayer separated. Those are game modes where people usually have a preference. For two, the game is just outright missing a ton of non-Objective or Slayer game modes. I'm talking about, for example, Team Snipers, SWAT, Team Doubles, etc. And the game is also missing a ton of fan-favorite Objective modes, like VIP, or King of the Hill, or even Bomb. Game type that have been a sort of staple of Halo for a long time. I think making this worse was the fact that Fiesta was introduced as part of a limited time event, then once that was over, an event of course which was filled with monetization, the game mode itself also disappeared. That takes us to John's tweet today who said, let's talk about Halo Infinite playlists. We've been reading your feedback and we're working on plans to add Fiesta, SWAT, and Free For All playlists as we speak. They won't land by December 8th, but the team is pushing to get them in before the end of the year. He continued by saying, a social Slayer playlist is in the works and that they will continue to monitor feedback. So I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed because some assume that come December 8th when the game technically launched that we would be getting more game modes and to be honest it's kind of strange that we're not. I understand some of where 343 is coming from in this regard and I'll talk about that in a second but the game really launched with so little content that has been a part of Halo for a very long time. Like the fact that King of the Hill and Bomb aren't part of the objective series is kind of weird. The fact that Objective and Slayer are pushed together is also kind of weird. I also just don't really understand why it's going to take so long to put SWAT into the game. Ranked Slayer right now is essentially SWAT, but for the fact that SWAT starts with no shields, you would think that this kind of stuff would just be something they switch over on the server end and it's updated for us. Some people have argued that maybe the UI doesn't allow for that many game modes. If that's true, that is, in my opinion, fairly troubling. I personally really like the event system they have. I think it's really cool that there'll be limited time game modes, but I don't think that should be where the gameplay that we're used to is really locked down. One cool idea for a limited time community mode would be something like Snowball Fight, where everyone spawns only with plasma grenades, and it's kind of just a silly little event that you can play and unlock some weapon charm or skin or just something small. Even Team Fiesta as a limited time event is fine on its own. Maybe you've got like super Super Fiesta like Halo 5 had, but just generally, you still need to have a playlist which has typically been called Action Sack, which has some of the sillier games right now. Right now, for example, in Halo Infinite, there's no real option for a more laid-back experience other than, I guess, BTV. It is just really weird, in my opinion, that the game shipped with so few game modes and just so little content generally. That's to say nothing of the fact that Halo Infinite doesn't really bring anything super new to the formula besides being free-to-play. Now, for some people, that's okay. For me, given the fact that this is supposed to be a system seller, it's like supposedly the next generation of Halo, I would have liked to see some sort of new big mode akin to Firefight or Invasion or Warzone from Halo 5. It just kind of blows my mind, I guess, that not only can you not match make into these game types, but you can't even play them in custom games. It's just really weird for a game to be so content thin in 2021. Again, I'm not the kind of person who thinks that there needs to be a playlist for every single game type. I don't think there needs to be a capture the flag playlist 
list, for example, but there does need to be one with more objective game types, ones that aren't quite as popular, but objective players still like. There needs to be just more overall. That being said, I do think I understand where Halo was coming from when they designed this system. And I don't think actually that this is something that was done maliciously. I don't think this was something that was done to make battle press progression more difficult, like some have suggested. I think that they're looking at what games like League of Legends have done, where there's really one marquee game mode that's relied on to draw players, and apparently there's even some information and some data which suggests that players can get burnt out on these more niche game types. That's why I don't think every single game mode in Halo's history needs to have a playlist, but there does need to be more. Moving on though, I will talk briefly about the controversy around monetization and progression. We'll start with progression because that's the one that has gotten some news lately. Progression in Halo has been changed quite significantly. Initially, you got 25 XP after your first game, and then after two more more games than three more games so the more you played the less xp you earned overall then it was changed to 50 xp every game and now they've sort of changed it in the opposite direction where you get a ton of xp for your first game 300 less all the way down to 50 until that's what you get sort of overall so it works out now that you can progress one battle pass level after six games every night which in my opinion is quite generous maybe too generous i think people are going to really blaze through this battle pass and be a bit frustrated when they feel like there's not a lot of content to do Team Fiesta is going to add to this because a lot of the challenges are to get kills with a certain weapon. My last one for this week before the ultimate challenge is to get a sword kill and that's been taking me a while because I mostly play ranked. So I actually think it's maybe gone a bit too far in the opposite direction. I don't think that's a huge deal, but I do think there is going to be a sense of community frustration when everyone's made their way through the battle pass and the next season's not coming out for a few more months. Still, I think people are generally pretty happy on that front. Obviously, it's not the system that some people want where your XP progression is directly related to your in-game performance. For me personally, I don't really need that. I play ranked and in ranked, you're really rewarded for playing well. If you go off and just dominate a game, you get a lot of rank usually. So if you're struggling to find reasons to play, I mean, play the game because it's fun. But if you want that reward, I guess, try ranked mode. The last thing is monetization. There's been no real news on this. There's maybe been some allusions to the fact that 343 has sort of been forced into pricing things a certain way to gauge community interest. I don't really know about that. I will say though, the Halo Infinite store is not in a great place right now. Things are too expensive for what you get. That's a subjective thing. It's all virtual and made up anyway, so there's no real value, I don't think, other than what people will pay for it. I will say I have seen it feels a high uptake on store purchases. Almost every game I play has someone using one of the premium uh, Euroi armors or buying the big bundle that's on that store for the week. So I don't actually know whether 343 is going to be inclined to change anything because it does seem like they're doing well but that's kind of the last thing that i'm waiting to hear from because that's my biggest issue i think with the game right now not that i'm somebody who really needs cosmetics in my game but just because i don't like the fact that 343 has tried to clearly squeeze whales for as much money as possible through the game but guys that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to subscribe to my second channel x2 we do almost daily uploads there and we stream so until then guys have a good one be safe and may the four be with you.